Our last parable today is the most difficult to understand of all Jesus' parables. It didn't take long for the earliest church to recontextualize this story into something more manageable, but even our oldest ancestors in the faith left us clues that they admitted that they had little luck in comprehending it. It turns out that not all rich elites were greedy, and some did get the message and lived accordingly. These exceptions to the rule helped spread, helped the spread of what would become Christianity. Without these elites and their writings, we would not be Christian today. Let's get ready to hear this very strange story with open hearts. Thank you. Let's stand for Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, you call us to be good stewards of time, talents, and treasure. Help us to be clever with teach with the things of God and the world. Help us to listen to the church, our mother, and her distinction between justice and charity. Give us open ears and hearts for this strange story, insight for seeing our own prejudiced ideas and wishful expectations. Make us all ready always to share your memory or your mercy, even in difficult places. Amen. 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 All right, folks. <laughs> Bible Live, the parables of Jesus, final presentation, debt forgiveness, the parable of the shrewd steward, Luke chapter 16, verses 1 through 8. Luke chapter 16, verses 1 through 8. Debt. We're going to explore a parable right now that is absolutely puzzling people today, and it has been puzzling them since the late 20s, common era. Yeah, what's that image? That's just the eraser, erasing debt, the word. As we're going to see, this puzzle, this, uh, this, uh, this uh, parable, clearly puzzled the author we call Luke. It puzzled later anti-Nicene Jesus groups. That's the Jesus groups or churches before the Council of Nicaea 325, common era, which came up with our creed that we Catholic Christians and other Christians profess on Sunday. We believe in God, Father, Almighty, yada, 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 yada. And it puzzled post-Nicene Christians. If you surveyed the commentators of the parable from our time, you would find opinions of it all over the map. For the greater part of 2,000 years, people have not known what to do with this story because it seems to imply that Jesus commends a dishonest man. What? So let's read the story called The Parable of the Shrewd Steward to see what we can do to get out of the mess we are in. Because <laughs> it's a mess. Luke chapter 16, 1 through 8. And then we're going to read verses 9 through 13. Then Jesus also said to his disciples, A rich man had a steward who was reported to him for squandering his property. He summoned him and said, what is this I hear about you? Prepare a full account of your stewardship because you can no longer be my steward. The steward said to himself, What shall I do now that my master is taking the position of steward away from me? I am not strong enough to dig and I am too ashamed to beg. I know what I shall do so that when I am removed from the stewardship, they may welcome me into their homes. He called in his master's debtors one by one. To the first he said, how much do you owe my master? He replied, 100 measures of olive oil. He said to him, here is your promissory note. Sit down and quickly write one for 50. Then to another he said, And you, how much do you owe? He replied, One hundred cores of wheat. 
he said to him, here is your promissory note. Write one for 80. And the master commended that dishonest steward for acting prudently. Punchline number one. For the children of this world are more prudent in dealing with their own generation than are the children of light. Punchline number two. I tell you, make friends for yourselves with dishonest wealth so that when it fails, you will be welcomed into eternal dwellings. Punchline number three. The person who is trustworthy in very small matters is also trustworthy in great ones. And the person who is dishonest in very small matters is also dishonest in great ones. If therefore you are not trustworthy with dishonest wealth, who will trust you with true wealth? If you're not trustworthy with what belongs to another, who will give you what is yours? Punchline number four. No servant can serve two masters. He will either hate one and love the other, or be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Money. Four punchlines. <coughs> How the hell can I have four punchlines? It's a long parable. <laughs> It's a lot of the punchlines. Well, I punchlines. One of them's going to be right. That's what he's thinking, baby. I don't really understand this, but I'll sling these four out at you, and maybe you guys will make better sense of it than me. Stupid sticks. This is yet another story about a rich man. We've talked a lot about rich elites in the past uh, three presentations. He has a steward who manages his property. Bad reports are brought before the rich man about his steward squandering his property. Luke 16.1. A rich man had a steward who was reported to him for squandering his property. It's very important to note here that charges were brought to the rich man about his managing steward. We're going to learn as to why this matter is so. The steward is ordered to give an accounting. Pardon me. Luke 16, verse 2. Prepare a full <coughs> account of your stewardship because you can no longer be in the <coughs> Things are desperately bad for the steward. He struggles to decide what to do. Verse 3. The steward said to himself, What shall I do? Now that my master is taking the position of steward away from me, I'm not strong enough to dig and I'm ashamed to beg. I know what I shall do so that when I'm removed from the stewardship, they may welcome me into their homes. <coughs> Please recall that stewards are in the employ of the elite. The chimney stack. See that? This means that this man is a retainer. Someone who is next to power and authority, but not the source of his own power and authority. He's going to be terminated in his position as steward. I am not strong enough to dig, and I'm too ashamed to beg. Note that, because we're going to be coming back to that to understand this story later. The steward, wondering what he will do to solve this awful dilemma, decides to summon all his master's debtors in one by one and ask them how much they owe his master. These people owe the master enormous amounts of money. The steward decides to forgive or cancel huge portions of their debt, thereby giving away his master's money. How does his, his master react to this? Good job. Good job! The master commended, slaps him on the back, great work, buddy! He doesn't fire him. He rewards him, commends him for being dishonest, for acting prudently. He 
see why this is the most difficult of all parables to understand? Yeah. It was even difficult for Luke. That's why he slaps four punchlines onto it. Because even he went like, huh? 